Doctors' waiting rooms will never be the same post-COVID-19, according to one of our biggest primary health organisations. And it's not a bad thing. The pandemic has taught us invaluable lessons about keeping our germs to ourselves, even when we're waiting to see a doctor. Dropping to alert level two at midnight will mean a return to more face-to-face doctor's visits, with some GPs expecting a rush of patients who've ignored their aches and illnesses during lockdown and beyond. ProCare oversees more than 170 practices in the Auckland region with over 800,000 registered patients. Its clinical director, Dr Alan Moffat, explains what a visit to the doctors will look like from tomorrow. One of the silver linings from all of this thing is that I think we've got a new way of of, um, avoiding people from getting infected in in GPs' waiting rooms now that um, probably in retrospect was never a great idea, but um, it won't be acceptable anymore to have people that are potentially infectious sort of um, cluttering up the waiting room and, and, and causing uh, infection in other people, potentially. So under Level 2, definitely um, call ahead, and if you've got symptoms or at risk in any way, you'll be dealt with in a similar way, either virtually if, if it's safe and, and appropriate to do so, or if you need to be seen, uh, they may ask you to stay in the car until you're ready to come through into the actual isolation room. Given that under Level 2 there will be face-to-face consultations and there will still be virtual consultations, can you clear up the charges that um, doctors are charging? We've had a lot of feedback about this and the charges vary wildly. Should it be the same amount of money for a virtual consultation as it is for a face-to-face consultation? We've had somebody say 150 bucks for a five-minute phone call is what they were charged. $19 is another person at a medical centre. $73 at a doctor's visit. And someone else, and this was a pro-care facility, says one three-minute phone call with a nurse, not the doctor, and two prescriptions cost them $50 in the doctor's fee. What should it be around about? There is a lot of variety out there as well. Um, And look, I can't give a prescribed fee because it depends on the nature of the consult. um, And it would be counter to the um, Commerce Act actually for me to say, look, this should be this price. Um, The reality is that it um, is a um, competitive market. Uh, out there. What I can say is that people should still be able to get value. In fact, they should even get better value out of a virtual consult where it's safe and appropriate to do it virtually without being seen in person. And what you're paying for is the years of um, knowledge and um, advice that is given out by the GP or the nurse, and um, that that still is valued advice. So, um, you know, whether you're being seen face-to-face or whether that happens by phone, you are still getting access to a lot of knowledge and and wisdom that uh, is then able to reassure or do the appropriate um, test or whatever the case may be. So you think Um, virtual consultation, sorry to interrupt, but to be clear, you think a virtual consultation and face-to-face is worth the same with your doctor in terms of what you pay? I I do. It's a question of time. I do agree that if it's a very short period of time, it's hard to justify a, a very high fee. But the reality around that is that it's a free market and people, if they're unhappy with what they're being charged, should take that up with their clinic and have that conversation. And if they're not satisfied, then, you know, it is... um, it is a free world out there, um, but uh, you should be able to clarify that with the um, doctors concerned. But uh, I would expect that you should be charged around the same price for a 10 to 15 minute proper phone consultation. I don't mean just a, um, a triage call, um, as you would if you had a face to face visit at the doctor's surgery. So basically you're saying it's a free market out there. Are you advising people to shop around then, given the vast variety and fees that seem to have surfaced during this time? I think it's really important that people feel comfortable with the relationship that they have with their doctor. So I think they should value that first and foremost, and that um, continuity is actually a really important thing. But if somebody's dissatisfied with um, you know, that relationship or cost becomes a problem, then um, they should take that up with their clinic concerned. And that was what I'd advise in the first instance, is that you have a conversation with your doctor about that. Could some of these fees be emerging because of the difficulty with funding during this time for GPs? The charging Well, I think some of the confusion also relates to what other sorts of subsidies subsidies are in the background, and that's not always apparent for... Um, the end user or the or the or the patient, um, for example, um, most COVID-related activities. So, if you've got a cough or a cold, 
currently, um, those um, those consultations will be funded by the DHB, so people won't have to pay anything, whether it's an in-person consult or indeed a phone uh, face-to-face consult. Now, how long that continues for, um, I don't know. At some point, it will probably stop. Um, you know, if we still have very low amounts of um, COVID being present in the community. But at the moment, um, you know, those things will be free. Other things that you still have to pay for. Um, and so I think that's part of the confusion. There are 173 or practices under the ProCare umbrella. Uh, are, are any of those practices calling it quits as a result or are in dire financial straits as a, as a consequence of COVID-19? Uh, we're certainly concerned that, um, you know, uh, we've got a number of practices that have said uh, that without additional support, um, they are likely to be closing their books, uh, closing their, their practice, sorry, within the sort of next uh, six weeks. And so that is a concern. Um, we hope that with the um, move out of Level 3 to Level 2 that, that um, their financial situation will improve and pick up. Um, and we've certainly conveyed that information to the to the government around um, those practices that are, are at risk. How many would you say are in that category of being at risk? Our information suggests that it may be as high as seven percent of practices are at risk of uh, winding up if uh, they don't get additional support.